Welcome to Acids and Bases Part 9. This video tutorial will focus on cereal dilution and um, the beautiful alignment they have with pH and the logarithm scale. Let's get started. Alrighty, so dilution. So we've heard that word before. Um, back in an earlier chapter, we learned that the dilution equation, that if we have Typically, we'll represent C1 or C2 as the more concentrated solution. And then C2 and V2 will be the more dilute solution. So, of course, the C's represent concentration and the V's represent volume. All right. And there is a um, video tutorial on um, dilutions and solutions earlier in the series if you need to a refresher. Um, the beauty here though is that for serial dilutions we are going to want to solve for C2. All right so this is unique to the serial dilution situation. So if we rearrange our dilution calculation for C2, we would see that C2 equals C1 V1 over V2. Now, the cool part is when we're doing a 1 to 10 dilution, what that says is that the, the volume, the initial volume V1 is, the, is referred to as the 1, and we'll just say 1 mil. And then the 10 refers to V2, and we'll just use milliliters. The main point here is that whatever volumes you use, the units must match. So as long as your volume units match, this tutorial will guide you to the correct answer. So now that we've identified the, the values for V1 and V2, we can see that um, doing a 1 to 10 dilution, the C2 will be C1 divided by 10. All right? So there is our dilution formula for a 1 to 10 dilution, serial dilution series. And the reason why we like to do 1 to 10s is because of the logarithmic nature of pH, which is in base 10. So we have a beautiful complement. All right. Let's go through the serial dilution process. Okay, so we begin with solution A. This is our original stock solution. And so typically when you're in the lab, you'll start with a carefully prepared original stock solution, and then we can make a series of dilutions, so we'll call it a serial dilution. So this is solution A. So let's see what we know about solution A. Right? So solution A, we can read the bottle. It's one molar HCl. All right. And we understand acid-base chemistry. So we know if we have hydrochloric acid, that it's a strong acid, and it fully ionizes to H+. So if we see we have one molar HCl, we know that we also have one molar H plus because it fully ionizes into the hydronium or the hydrogen ions and the chloride ions. So now we can calculate the pH, which is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So the pH is the negative log of one which is zero, all right? So this first solution, pH equals zero. Now that we know about solution A, let's look at solution B, all right? So here's solution B. We'll work on solution B right here in this space. All righty. So now we need to use our serial dilution calculation. So the concentration of solution B will be the concentration of solution A 
divided by 10. So the concentration of solution A, and we're just going to focus on the hydrogen ions here because we're linking to pH. So that would be 1 molar divided by 10, or 0 0.1 molar H+. Plus. All right. So if you're wondering where the 10 milliliters came from, the final volume is 10 milliliters because, right, where did this 10 come from? We had the 1 milliliters of solution A and then 9 milliliters of water. So we have 10 milliliters as our final volume. All righty. So from there, then, the pH is the negative log of H plus, which we have calculated to be 0.1 molar. So the pH equals 1. All right. So now we can put that information on our diagram, pH equals 1. So we're seeing the, um, the, the lovely synchronicity between 1 to 10 serial dilutions and the pH scale. Let's do one last solution just to make sure everybody understands. Let's look at solution C. All right. So for solution C, the concentration of solution C will be the concentration of solution B divided by 10. So that'll be 0.1 molar divided by 10. And that's for H plus. Squeeze that in. So the concentration of solution C will be 0 0.0, yeah, 0 0.01 molar H plus. And to take the pH, negative log of 0 0.01 molar, and so the pH would equal 2. So we'll write that information right here. pH equals 2. So I know that this is an important set of um, calculations, especially for your, the microbiology class, if that's in your future. So let's, um, now that we have the basic understanding, let's practice a little bit more on the next page. Okay, so this time we will start with a stock solution that has an original concentration of 10 to the minus 3 molar. So we will call this, this will be our original solution A. Okay. Um, and so let's make sure everyone understands, right? We did this on the previous page, but let's make sure Right, there's the acid dissociation reaction, so this will become H plus plus Cl minus. So we know that the concentration of HCl um, is converted, right, completely into H plus and Cl minus because we have a strong acid. So a strong acid gives us 100% ionization. Okay, so the calculations I'm showing you only work for strong acids. With weak acids, it becomes much more complicated. Alrighty, now let's um, draw a diagram so we can conceptualize exactly what's happening. So our use, typically our original solution comes in a bottle. That would be solution A. And this is 10 to the minus 3 molar H plus, based off our reaction. And then we're going to take um, 1 milliliter of solution A. And we're going to combine that with 9 mils of water into solution B. We'll mix that well, and then we'll take, and we'll take one mil of B and nine mils of water, and that will produce 
solution C. And then finally, we will take one milliliter of C and we'll add nine mils of water and that will produce solution D. So now that we understand the dilution steps, we will um, perform the calculations. All righty. Well, the original solution, we already know the concentration. It's um, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And so, of course, for the pH, we just simply take the negative log of H3O plus. So the pH would be 3.00. If you're wondering about the sig figs, um, please refer to the pH tutorial. So now for the first dilution, the concentration of A divided by 10. So that would be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 10 molar, so that would be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 is the result. You should be able to do this in your head, but if you need to use a calculator, um, try to transition away, because in your bio classes they won't let you use a calculator. All right, to get to the um, C, so for C, we'll have the concentration of B divided by 10. Let's put that near the SC. Okay, so our concentration for B was 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. And then we're going to divide that by 10. And so solution C, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 5 molar, which would give us a pH of 5.00. And then lastly, to determine the concentration of solution D, we would take the concentration of C and divide by 10. So the concentration of C, we determined to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 5 molar, divide by 10. 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 molar, which of course would be a pH of 6. And then just to kind of take this opportunity, there's a little space left on the paper. Might as well wrap this around. For solution D, how would we calculate the hydroxide concentration? Right? We would use the KW. Okay? So we always know the KW. The KW is 10 to the minus 14. And we know the hydronium concentration, it's right here. So we can solve for hydroxide. So the hydroxide concentration will be 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6. And so our hydroxide concentration, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 8 molar hydroxide. All righty, whoops. Okay, so that concludes our video tutorial on serial dilutions and their relationship to um, the pH scale. Please take some time now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.